Imagine a giant star, a space object with ginormous mass, collapsing down into gravitational singularity. This is a region of space where the density of matter becomes infinite. In such areas, the standard concepts of space and time don't have any meaning anymore. No wonder such objects have captured our imagination. These days, we even have a few photos of black holes, or rather, the space around them. The first photo of a black hole's event horizon was taken in 2019. The event horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example matter, radiation, or light, reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape. We can use the event horizon to estimate the size of the black hole. The larger it is, the more massive the black hole you've come across is. An international team of scientists that consisted of more than 200 astronomers had been working for years to get this result, and eventually their efforts paid off. The black hole, the region around which they managed to capture, is about 55 light years away from Earth at the center of the galaxy M87. People saw this amazing image thanks to the work of a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight radio telescopes. But it was tricky. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. But even though now we kind of know what a black hole looks like from the outside, we haven't figured out what might be waiting for us on the other side. Many people imagine black holes as bizarre portals to other worlds, dimensions, or parallel universes. We'll get back to these theories a bit later. So, why not jump into a black hole and go all the way to the other side? Unfortunately, such an escapade is bound to end tragically. If something gets close to a black hole, there's no escape. You might argue that you don't need to go back. After all, you want to explore what's ahead. True, but there's another problem. The force of gravity around a black hole increases dramatically the closer you come. It even creates the effect of spaghettification when an object gets stretched into thin strands of space pasta due to the effects of gravity. When spaghettified, the matter then gets pulled into the black hole's orbit and flattened into a swirling and glowing disk of material. And eventually, this matter settles into a nice orbit around the black hole, quite far away from the point of no return. And that's not how you want your space adventure to end. Well, I don't. Getting something to cross the event horizon isn't as easy as it may seem. The material needs to be pushed out of its stable orbit around the black hole. In other words, something must make it fall in, just like it happens with the Sun and Earth. Despite the star's enormous gravity, our planet doesn't get pulled towards it, right? One of the few reasons why the material might cross the event horizon is collisions between particles. By crashing into one another, they gain some energy, and that's enough to send them spiraling into a black hole. An object entering a black hole is instantly transformed. From the outside, it would seem as if the object starts moving more slowly, because time distorts near the event horizon of a black hole. From the perspective of the object falling into this space monster, it would take an infinite amount of time for it to become a part of the black hole. When it happens, its mass will be added to that of the black hole. But even if you somehow manage to survive entering a black hole, you wouldn't be able to come out on the other side. Now, I might disappoint you right now, but black holes don't go anywhere. There aren't any holes involved. And these space phenomena aren't even black. Or at least that sort of black. Black holes might seem inky because even light can escape their clutches. But this has nothing to do with their color. Anyway, when you cross a black hole's event horizon, all paths lead to the singularity, even if we talk about a photon of light moving directly away from it. But the main problem here is that singularities are mathematically impossible. That's why some scientists suggest that when all this weird stuff happens inside the black hole, 
its mass gets linked to the expansion of the entire universe. And such a black hole is like a rubber band, stretching along with the universe as it expands. And as it stretches, its energy increases. And since mass and energy are proportional, the mass of the black hole increases too. But this new mass creates a pressure that makes the universe expand even more. That's the reason the universe is expanding faster and faster all the time. Wow, that sounds insane. Then there's also a theory about parallel universes, and this multiverse theory takes it all one step further. Those who believe in it state that there might be countless realities. According to this theory, we live in a bubble that is just one of many other bubbles. And these bubbles constantly pop up and vanish. And guess what? Right, black holes might be tunnels between these universes. Or rather, not tunnels, but wormholes. This idea that black holes could be wormholes leading to other galaxies or universes has been around for some time. It gained some fresh ground in the 1980s when a discussion started about whether an object could physically travel through such a tunnel. But since there's no firm evidence that a black hole can allow for such a passage, this remains just an idea. But if black holes lead to other galaxies or other universes, there must be something opposite to them on the other side. That's where the concept of white holes comes into play. So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse, or as a ball that falls to the ground and then bounces up again. In other words, everything that falls in bounces and comes out through the white hole. But how might white holes form? One of the theories speculates that a white hole might be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. What if, inside a black hole, there's a long tube that keeps getting longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back? And then, the super long and super narrow tube is getting thicker and wider again. And we've got a white hole on our hands. But then, what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out? According to quantum mechanics, Many things we perceive as continuous are granular. Even light is not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point, it will reach its minimum size. And this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back giving birth to a white hole. What matter would such a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It would be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole, since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. And while black holes have an event horizon, white holes would have a reversed event horizon. It would prevent anything from entering a white hole. And because of this feature of white holes, if you decided to travel to one, you wouldn't be able to even get close to it. We're traveling a thousand light years from our planet to an unfamiliar system. Here, there are two bright stars orbiting close to each other. But there is one small but very massive thing here as well a black hole. These objects are mysterious and dangerous. They're capable of swallowing our entire world in one second without even noticing it. Even more, they can tear apart a huge star like our Sun. And it's these giants that usually lie at the centers of galaxies. They're so heavy that their gravity holds countless stars, planets, and stardust around them. They can weigh millions or even billions of times more than the Sun. And now, you're back on the ground at a rocket launch pad on Earth. All you can think about is holding your breath and jumping into the heart of that black pearl. But you don't have to hold your breath because you'll be in a spacesuit, and the oxygen is included free of charge. Besides, you're not likely to ever make it to the black hole. A trip that far with the technology we have now would take tens of thousands of years. Back to your garage where you stashed your hyper rocket, which will take you to the black hole in seconds. And you're next to two stars in a black hole. 
first thing you notice is that the black holes aren't black. Its gravitational force pulls in not only objects, but even light itself. This makes the hole invisible. You can only see a bright ring around it. That's called the event horizon. It consists of twisted light, hot dust, plasma, and pieces of asteroids that are also trapped there. So the event horizon is the first obstacle to overcome. Okay, you put on your jetpack, open your rocket's door, and jump towards the black hole. The force of gravity begins to pull you quickly toward it. The spacesuit protects you from the enormous temperatures and levels of radiation on the event horizon. Conventional protective gear would hardly help you. So you thank your dad for stashing this super-powerful protective suit in your garage as well. You begin to feel like your body's stretching unpleasantly. The problem is that gravity increases with every inch closer to the center of the black hole. And it's much stronger at your head than at your feet. Your body starts to stretch like spaghetti. That's why it's called spaghettification. No suit can protect you from that. And there isn't a single spaceship that can withstand that kind of strain. Well, this was a short video. Okay, let's rewind to the moment before the jump. You realize that to get to the heart of the black hole and survive, you don't need improved equipment, but another black hole. And it's the size and weight of it that matters here. Theoretically, you can survive falling into a supermassive black hole. It's all about the width of the black hole's event horizon. When a hole is small, about the weight of our sun, the event horizon is small too. And then its edge is remarkably close to the center of the abnormal gravitational force, which would make you spaghettified quickly and uh, brutally. But if the event horizon is wide, it's farther from the center of the gravitational force. Then the difference of gravity pressing on your head and feet will be non-existent. So if you have enough air in your spacesuit, you can survive such a journey. So you must pick a supermassive black hole. Hmm, let's see. One at the center of the Milky Way? No, there's too much hot plasma and debris around it. You need a completely isolated black hole for a jump like this. Somewhere in dark space where it hasn't had time to gather the debris of neighboring worlds around it. You quickly open your space map and find such a black hole. One faster than light trip and you've arrived. There it is! A huge dark nothing. There's only distorted light from distant stars and galaxies on its event horizon. To test your theory, you throw a mannequin into it. It approaches the black hole and then slows to a standstill. But it's just an illusion. The black hole is so heavy, it can warp both space and time. So to the observer, the dummy is frozen in the event horizon. But it has long since entered its heart. The dummy didn't get spaghettified like you did when you fell into a small black hole. So now you're confidently jumping after it. Remember that even if you feel fine, it's still a one-way trip. Once in the black hole's field of attraction, nothing can escape its embrace. No matter how powerful a rocket you have or how hard you flap your arm. You're now at the edge of the accretion disk. Every second here equals weeks or months on Earth. You're traveling through time. Our home planet may already have flying cars and skyscrapers several miles tall all over the place. But for you, it's only a couple of minutes. Whoa! All the light you see from the stars has turned red. That too is because of gravity. The light we see is waves, but the black hole stretches them out. The short wavelengths of blue become long and red. Great! You've passed the event horizon and are now heading into black nothingness. You look up and see a thin ray of light. The last thing you see, in fact. After that, there's just black void. No one knows what happens next. Some theories say black holes can be portals to another dimension, or to another place in the universe. By jumping into a black hole in our galaxy, you can jump hundreds of thousands of light years away from our home. In that case, you will experience your fall in reverse. First, you see a small but expanding beam of light. Then, red starlight returns to blue. And before you know it, you're back on the event horizon. And soon after, you're free of the black hole's pool. 
But scientists still can't confirm this theory. Okay, that's too grim. So just this time, we'll bring you back to Earth in the company of your friends. They praise you for your accomplishment of surviving the center of a black hole. Now you're the heart of the company, and no black hole can scare you. But even the biggest black hole in space isn't as scary as you might think. They have a lifespan. That radiation I mentioned takes energy from the black hole. If it doesn't have food around it, the hole starts to deflate like a balloon. And eventually, there's nothing left. Another fear around black holes is that we can create one at home. Indeed, inside the Large Hadron Collider, scientists conduct experiments with small particles colliding at high speed. There are huge bursts of energy. And some scientists believe this energy is enough to create a microscopic black hole. It will begin to absorb its surroundings and grow. First, some small objects in the room where it was created. Then, the entire lab. The hole continues to grow and is already consuming our whole planet. It changes the balance of power in our solar system and absorbs the planets one by one. When those are finished, it's time for dessert. The sun! The light upper layers of plasma are stretched into long spaghetti and pulled toward the black hole. Then, layer by layer, our star collapses into the dark abyss. When the sun is half absorbed, the black hole shoots a beam of energy and light outwards and continues to consume the sun. In mere moments, there's nothing left of our solar system. That's how some people describe the end of the world. But even if we do manage to create a microscopic black hole, we'll be safe. It'll be too small to absorb big objects, and it will only feed on small atomic particles. Black holes emit energy as well as consume it, so our little one won't have time to grow. It'll lose more than it finds in a fraction of a second. So what you'll see is a momentary flash and then nothing. Although creating a stable and controlled black hole may even be useful, they emit enormous amounts of energy that we can use. A black hole the mass of Mount Everest could power all of humanity. Of course, black holes are still dangerous. But we can watch them and study our universe. If we stay far enough away, of course. So, you decide to put a padlock on that garage door. For now. Oh, fasten your seatbelts. We're setting course for the most bizarre places in our universe, and you'll see the most mysterious phenomena few people have ever seen before. Recently, astronomers have discovered that the supermassive black hole at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy might be leaking. Why is it a significant change? Because it might mean that this black hole, called Sagittarius A-star, whose mass is 4.1 million times the mass of our Sun, isn't a sleeping giant as previously thought it might still be active. And the leakage, recorded by scientists, may be the whole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. Hey, I've been known to do that from time to time. During the research, the team of astronomers used the Hubble Space Telescope. It helped them spot a jet that looked like a blowtorch. It was pushing into clouds of hydrogen at the center of our galaxy. The jet seemed to spew gas like a hose directed into a pile of sand. This often occurs around other active black holes surrounded by the material drawn to them by their immense gravitational pull. Some of this material gets pulled into the black hole, but a small part of it gets swept outward by powerful magnetic fields. The research suggests that when a giant gas cloud gets too close to our supermassive black hole, it gets swallowed, and then the hole belches small jets of matter. Fermi bubbles might be the result of the belches that occurred around 2 to 4 million years ago. But recently, scientists have found another giant glowing bubble of hot gas. It aligned with the jet stretching for 35 light years or more from the supermassive black hole. Astronomers suspect that the jet could have plowed into this bubble of gas and inflated it. Now, let's visit some other breathtaking places in our universe. But be careful, some of them are extremely dangerous like this rotating neutron star called the Black Widow Pulsar. Just like its spider namesake, it's munching on its partner, a lightweight brown dwarf star. The more material this pulsar consumes, the more slowly it spins. The energy the neutron star is losing in the process causes the companion star to dwindle. If it does exist, 
nuclear pasta is the strongest material in the entire universe. Formed from the leftovers of extinguished stars, this substance gets squeezed into spaghetti-like tangles of material. It can break, but only if you apply 10 billion times the pressure needed to shatter steel. How about visiting a planet where it rains glass? Nah, I'd rather not. You see, this bright blue exoplanet looks peaceful and slightly familiar. Don't you think it slightly resembles Earth? But this pretty appearance hides the planet's terrifying nature. The winds blow at 5,400 miles per hour on its surface. That's seven times the speed of sound. But that's not the worst. It rains glass sideways in this scorching hot alien world. Solar tsunamis are a solar phenomenon dubbed terminator events. These tsunamis take place at the sun's equator. Disastrous magnetic field collisions seem to cause ginormous twin tsunamis of plasma. These tsunamis tear across the star's surface, moving at a speed of 1,000 feet per second. They can last for weeks at a time and happen every decade or so. Now look at this space body. Its nickname is Electric Hyperion. This Saturn's moon is one of the most bizarre-looking moons in the solar system, but its appearance isn't the strangest thing about it. This pumice-stone-like rock, pockmarked with countless craters, is also charged with static electricity, and it's flowing out into space. Look at this, a rogue planet with auroras. Lost in space and drifting through galaxies, rogue planets were once flung away from their parent stars. But one of them, 200 light-years away from Earth, is different from the rest. It's a planet-sized object with a magnetic field 200 times stronger than that of Jupiter. This field is so powerful that it generates flashing auroras in the planet's atmosphere. Be sure to stay away from black holes. Do I really need to warn you? Yep, they're some of the most perilous objects in the universe. But how about mini black holes? Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand sedans. One theory claims that tons of micro-black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple of many black holes pass through our planet every day. Ooh, I'll bet you like our next stop, a burning ice planet. Far away Neptune-sized exoplanet Gliese 436b is a paradox. It's made of scorching hot ice. The planet completes one full orbit around the red dwarf Gliese 436 in just two days. It means it's traveling remarkably close to its parent star. That might be the reason the planet's temperatures rarely drop below 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But the strangest thing? The planet hosts huge volumes of water ice known as Ice X, which remains solid despite blistering temperatures. Now, if you love jewelry, this next world is for you. A diamond planet. About 4,000 light-years away from Earth, there's a planet that seems to be one enormous diamond. The planet is denser than any other discovered so far and consists mostly of carbon. It's so dense that astronomers think this carbon might be crystalline. This, in turn, might mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. Moons orbiting other moons might exist, or they might not. Astronomers haven't agreed on this one yet. Planets orbit stars, and moons orbit planets. But then, why can't there be moon moons, also known as submoons, moonettes, and moons? It actually sounds like one of those flowery Hawaiian dresses, you know, moo moos. But alas, no. Researchers claim that moon moons could exist, but the host moon has to be massive enough, the moon moon small enough, and there must be a wide gulf between these moons and the host planet. Now, I'll take you to the living fossil galaxy. DG Sat 1 is as big as the Milky Way, but it's nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thinly. But what makes the galaxy unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind. Those are usually found in clusters. It can mean that DG Sat 1 was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, this galaxy is a real living fossil. Now, you won't be able to see the next space phenomenon, all because people can't see infrared light. And the phenomenon I'm talking about is an infrared stream from space. Ooh. Neutron stars are ultra-dense collapsed cores of giant stars. They usually emit X-rays or radio waves. But in 2018, 
astronomers discovered a weird stream of infrared light. It seemed to be coming from a neutron star 800 light-years away from our planet. This signal was probably generated by a disk of dust surrounding the star. But this theory hasn't been proven yet. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists fail to explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding from our sight a ginormous planet. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9. And all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Let's visit our star. But we need to be careful not to come too close. Because the Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. Now this space object is also worth visiting. Haumea, a dwarf planet orbiting in the Kuiper Belt, has a bizarre elongated shape and two moons. The day on this planet lasts 4 hours, making it the fastest spinning big object in our solar system. But the most mysterious thing about Haumea is that the planet has a thin 40-mile-wide ring circling it. Ring-a-ding-ding! 